While many companies were forced to make changes to keep going, not all of these pandemic pivots have been negative. In fact, we hope some are here to stay. Joining me now are marketing connections experts, Paul Schmidt from Unodus Multimedia, Jesse Flores of Super Web Pros, and Tim Haynes of Symposia Labs. Welcome to the show. Hi, thanks for having us. Let's talk pandemic pivots, starting with this show, Expert Connections. Exactly one year to the day of this show launching on WLAJ, Expert Connections actually started as a Facebook Live series during the pandemic. Our very first guest was a cleaning expert who talked about COVID-19. From there, we interviewed experts on mental health, small business loans, legal issues, sales, and of course, marketing. Sound familiar? At M Connections, it was all about connecting our clients and the community to the answers that all businesses needed. In all, we've easily interviewed more than 100 experts over the last year. Now we are on the air to help businesses grow during this next phase. I know each of you have seen other really great examples of successful changes. Jesse, you work with a lot of brick and mortar businesses. What are some of the shifts that you've seen to move from the literal foot traffic to digital storefront traffic? Yeah, you know, there's no denying that um, small businesses and particularly local businesses were among the biggest victims of COVID-19. Maybe not because they were infected with the disease, but they were certainly infected with the economic fallout. And one of the first things that we saw um, was everyone trying to figure out what a transition to digital would look like. Um, for instance, we started seeing restaurants reaching out to figure out how do we get curbside pickup set up? Can we set up online ordering um, you know, without paying huge fees to DoorDash or, or Grubhub? We saw consultants and coaches and knowledge workers um, trying to figure out like, hey, I, I can't network anymore. I, you know, I can't go to that chamber of commerce event. How do I get people into, um, uh, into my ecosystem so that I can continue to deliver the value that I deliver? And so we, we were watching people pivot into developing things like learning management systems uh, or uh, online courses and things of that nature. Um, but we also saw some, some companies start to pivot into uh, trying to figure out how to replicate their brick and mortar experience online. One of our favorite uh, stories was a company called Playmakers, a big running store, e-commerce store in uh, in the Lansing area. Um, you know, they have they're they're known for their great service and for helping people find the right fit. And they found a, a way to take that process and that in-store experience and bring it online via Zoom to help people still get that kind of fit and assessment and analysis that people were used to getting in store. And so they didn't let the pandemic stop them. Instead, they asked, how can we continue to add value to our customers through this and maybe a new and innovative way? And I think the most successful businesses are the ones that are asking that question and finding interesting answers especially the ones, like you said, creating those digital experiences. Paul, your team shifted, talk about experiences. Um, you started adding this emphasis on live streaming and virtual events. You also were a part of a really unique in-person event, kind of a hybrid event, because I know a lot was also done live on social media. Um, but this event was socially distanced, but yet had enough traffic that uh, it backed up city streets in Lansing. This is a great story. Tell us about this. Well, what you're referring to is something that was completely not something I expected. It was called Carnival of the Creatives. And so what was really cool about this was it was kind of a, a collaboration between um, uh, Downtown Lansing Inc incorporated which is a you know the the it's not really a dda but it's the organization that oversees the downtown lansing area as well as the artist's umbrella and opportunity opportunity arts and what they did was they took on halloween as a socially distant holiday incorporating artists who were who got hit pretty hard during the pandemic as well and they locked down a uh, uh parking garage and had families, you know, go up three, four flights, um, experiencing artists doing all sorts of art things and getting candy for their kids without leaving their car. So, and like Julie said, it backed up down the block so much so that the Lansing Police Department jumped in and helped um, steer the traffic correctly. So and they were happy to do so because finally people were able to be out and about, but socially distanced. I mean, talk about an incredible experience mm -hmm. done, um, you know, during the pandemic. Uh, yeah. I, 
I was blown away. I was one of the volunteers. I volunteered and I was like blown away about how many, it's like over 200 cars came through. It was amazing that this collaboration also happened within a, just a month span at tops. So they. Yeah. Short they, amount of time to plan it and yeah. to execute it. Absolutely. Yeah, great yeah. example, Paul. Tim, let's talk about some of the fundamentals behind all of these examples that Jesse and Paul have given. How have you seen the pandemic change the work that you're doing? So as a marketing agency, we had the privilege of having already had embraced digital communication and working remotely. An interesting data point here, jobs that included work from home or WFH, as I like to call it, that is an option. Those sorts of jobs increased by almost fivefold in Q3, according to LinkedIn during 2020. So the work from home trend is here to stay. Dispersed teams are here to stay. It's now normal and professional behavior to have our kids or our cats interrupt our business meetings. And I celebrate that. And I think that we should all celebrate that because although I know it sounds a little bit crazy, you and you and me, we are all employees perhaps, but most certainly we are also people. And the brands that we are buying from need to realize that everything has now shifted. Value-based marketing is the future. If you do not embrace the digital trend that is happening at an accelerated rate because of COVID, not only will your business's revenue die, but your employees will leave. Absolutely. Yes, you're right. That's not going anywhere anytime soon. Tim, Jesse, Paul, thank you so much for your insights today. To see more from our experts, head to WLAJ.com and click the link for Marketing Connections.